All right, so um, as they mentioned, my name is Kenny Davis. I'm a senior engineer at uh, Carvana. Um, I'm really bad at making slides, so you just get black text on a white background. So I've been using NX since um, met Jeff uh, at ng-conf back in like 2017. Um, worked with a number of teams since then, you know, helping them set up, uh, you know, various uh, workspaces, and. I always seem to get tasked with like figuring out the, the CI CD stuff. Um, and it usually always starts with a team, you know, that has some boilerplate like this uh, Azure pipeline here. And then, you know, all the nitty gritty questions start coming in about how you do, you know, the actual um, deployments. What do I do if I can't just run, you know, a simple NX command because I have additional steps, you know, that my organization requires me to run, or maybe I need a different um, OS, like maybe I need Mac OS because I'm building a, a React Native app. Um, so what are some things that we can do to this pipeline um, to sort of, you know, sprinkle on all those additional requirements um, that we may or may not have? Um, so, you know, I've had the joy of working in both Azure Pipelines and Circle CI. So that's really, you know, the only place I'll, I'll kind of be covering. So um, some of these ideas might be applicable um, to other uh, tools, but, you know, I'm not really sure. So with Azure Pipelines, one of the things that I've sort of figured out over time is how um, you can sort of use the idea of splitting your pipelines into multiple files and then using NX to kind of drive some of the features within um, Azure Pipelines that I would say aren't super well documented. Um, and so one of those is the idea of using um, a matrix strategy on a job and letting NX sort of generate what that matrix is. And then um, your build pipeline can then sort of dynamically create jobs um, based on the output of, of that matrix. And then being able to sort of trigger the downstream um, pipelines automatically, one of the sort of keys to that is um, build tags. And then how you can just use NX to simply, you know, tag your build based on the projects that actually changed, um, you know, in that uh, commit. Um, similarly, in Circle CI, there's a newer feature um, in 2.1 or whatever it is um, for dynamic configuration, where you can have a setup workflow where the only job of that workflow is to actually generate the next configuration of workflows that's going to run. And so NX is a great tool to kind of go in there, determine exactly what changed, and then from there, derive the next workflow that you want to run. And so you don't have to have like conditional logic in your Circle CI pipelines, because you just generate the workflow that's going to run, and it'll include all the steps for just those projects. So to just quickly try to kind of show um, how this works, starting in um, Azure DevOps, um, the first thing that you can kind of do is create some way of actually generating um, the, uh, the matrix. And the matrix is just a JSON object which tells um, the, the next job in the sequence what to do. So, you know, the way I've kind of done it is just print the affected apps, select those project names, and pipe it into something that can actually generate that, um, that matrix. Um, once this is generated, um, it'll use the, uh, the logging commands within um, Azure DevOps to essentially save that uh, JSON object as a uh, variable that can then be used um, in the next job. So this job basically then becomes a template where um, this JSON object that gets passed in you know, from the previous job then contains a set of keys that just, you know, you can use as standard variables um, within the Azure pipeline to then build up the sequence of steps that you, uh, you want to run. So you can get 
as creative as you want to in here um, about A, what you put in the matrix, and then B, how you like set up the steps. Um, so, you know, in cases where you might have, again, multiple projects that might have different build types of requirements, like a React Native app that is going to need um, Mac OS and Xcode, you know, you can outport, you know, or output what uh, image that you want this job to run on. Um, you know, if you have special kind of build commands, um, you can put those in the matrix. Um, and then from here, you're just publishing your artifact, which would then be consumed by the, uh, uh, the next sort of release pipeline. And then ultimately tagging, um, you know, that build. And that build tag sort of becomes one of the keys um, for the release pipeline that will then um, trigger. So what this sort of ends up looking like um, is, you know, you have this uh, pipeline that runs. And again, the first um, step that will run here is, you know, just determining um, what needs to happen, generating your um, matrix. And then based on what is in that matrix, um, you'll see that it gets passed in. Hold on, where is it? Oh, maybe it's up here. Yeah, so let me see. that better? So this matrix will get passed in, and here's all the information that was just derived from um, NX based on um, what had changed. And again, based on you know, whatever your requirements are, um, you can put anything that you want um, into this matrix. And then for each key that is in this matrix, that's how many jobs will be created, and then um, those will run. So what will then sort of happen is um, you can then set up release pipelines um, and sort of store them with your application. Um, and so this is something that, you know, that I've had to do just to meet certain organizational requirements where certain steps have to run. They can't really just be packaged up into um, you know, an NPM script or, or something like that. Um, and so one of the things that Azure Pipelines allows you to do is to create resource triggers. So on here, my trigger is set to none. I don't want this to happen you know, based on some kind of git commit. I actually want it to happen when a build running in this pipeline for the main branch um, with this tag actually publishes an artifact. So then once that happens, then this pipeline will fire. Um, and then sort of the key here is, is that you can download a specific artifact from that pipeline run. So once your, um, your Azure pipeline has actually run and produced the artifact, even if other jobs in that um, initial pipeline are still running, this one will immediately um, kick off. So um, you know, if, you, if you're not able to use you know, some of the NX Cloud features and stuff to speed up your initial artifact output, this is sort of a, a way to kind of you know, simulate that in, in kind of a poor man's approach, I guess. Um, but it also allows you to sort of tailor each um, applications pipeline and uh, requirements specific to that app, version it with this app, et cetera, and then still gain access to the build artifact that um, you know, NX had orig originally produced in, uh, in that uh, first initial build pipeline. Um, so CircleCI is similar, um, where you will have this notion of a setup pipeline, and it's doing it can do two different things. Um, it can either generate, again, a set of um, you know, JSON parameters that will drive the next configuration file, or you can actually use NX to generate the actual um, continue config file. Um, so one of the things that, you know, just for the, the demo purposes here that I've done is kind of use the same sort of approach, let, um, let NX just figure out what projects changed, pipe that into something that'll create a, uh, a JSON object. 
And then from there, this uh, continuation orb will then let you specify which uh, file that you want to execute and what parameters that you're going to pass into it. But if you had NX actually generate the config file from scratch, um, you know, you would just put the path to the file that NX generated. And very similarly, um, you get something like this in, uh, in CircleCI where the initial setup workflow runs, and then based on whatever has been put into that configuration workflow, each workflow item will then um, go ahead and show up in here based on what is, is actually running. Um, so that's, that's about it. So I know I kind of flew through this, so if you have any questions, please you know, uh, find me, and uh, I'll answer whatever I can. Thank you.